Daily Devotion with Pastor Bala for August 30th, 2021 from Psalm chapter 50, The Calling of God, part one. Verse one, the mighty one, God the Lord, speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God shines forth. At every moment, the sun is rising somewhere on this earth. So the psalmist begins by noting that God is calling and summoning the earth, but most importantly, people of the earth not just once, but at every moment. St. Paul needs to remind us in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4, God desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. In this psalm verse, we have that Zion word again, where Zion can mean many things. Here, Zion is in reference to the people of God. So out of the faithful people of God, God shines forth, which is the perception of beauty. You might be thinking, but we're not perfect. However, God shines through us, and Jesus is perfect, and Jesus is shining through us, and that beauty is holy before God. Verse 3, our God comes. He does not keep silent. Before him is a devouring fire, around him a mighty tempest. He calls to the heavens above and to the earth that he may judge his people. Yes, God is calling for people to believe and trust in him. And there's also a reminder that there is a judgment. Those who believe and trust in God have eternal life, while those who do not believe and trust in God, have a devouring fire. Verse 5, Gather to me my faithful ones, who made a covenant with me by sacrifice. The heavens declare his righteousness, for God himself is judge. God is describing the faithful ones who made a covenant. A covenant is a promise, and in this case, one that is attached to a sacrifice. Basically, God is saying those who believe and trust in God, as we'll find out later in the psalm, not everyone who performed a sacrifice actually believed and trusted in God. Some were just going through the motions for the sake of the motions. Verse 7, Hear, O my people, and I will speak. O Israel, I will testify against you. I am God, your God. God. Oops. When God testifies against us, we are in trouble. But God clearly states, He is God, your God. So now, do you believe and trust in Him? Let's find out. Verse 8 Not for your sacrifices do I rebuke you. Your burnt offerings are continually before me. I will not accept a bull from your house or goats from your folds, for every beast of the forest is mine, a, the cattle on a thousand hills. I know all the birds of the hills, and all that moves in the field is mine. Here we're getting to the heart of the problem. God is reminding us that the animals belong to God. Okay, we may realize this point that God is trying to make. However, the real point that he's trying to make is regarding the sacrifices. And so let me state this in a question. Are we doing God a favor by performing a sacrifice? Or is God doing us a favor when a sacrifice is performed? Culling the herd is not what God is trying to accomplish. Like we are doing God a favor? No, if God wanted to call the herd, he can call the herd. Instead, God is calling out to us to realize our sin. And that means we need a savior. So the sacrificial system of the Old Testament was designed for us 
to receive God's grace. The people at the time of the psalmist, and even today, don't always realize what goes on in worship. In the middle of worship, we are receiving from God. This is why I like to call what we do on Saturday nights and Sunday morning the divine service, where the divine, that is God, serves us with his grace. This isn't about us serving God. This is about God serving us with the forgiveness of sins. Join me again tomorrow as we continue with Psalm 50. God's peace and many blessings be with you. And thank you for listening. And please take an opportunity to share this message with others. If you have enjoyed these daily devotions, please consider making a donation to Peace Lutheran Church, 24024 West Main Street, Plainfield, Illinois, 60544. Thank you again for listening.